Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit edges out the Pittsburgh Penguins thanks to two power play goals. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Uh, I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J-A-W-W-J News Radio podcast. Well, Scott is a host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And Scotty, it is a really good night. One, my voice is back. I finally feel like I can talk for the first time since like Thursday. Feels good. I'm happy for you. Thanks, but I was waiting for your response. Color coordinate a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm wearing green. I'm wearing my lockdown t-shirt with a really stretched out collar. Mine is a really cool sweatshirt that just says like a bunch of Detroit stuff on it. It says like Eight Mile, Comerica, (laughs) like Michigan, Trumbull, Belle Isle. That's cool. That is cool. Good for you, buddy. (laughs) Thanks, man. (laughs) Detroit. Speaking of, won a hockey game. Oh, did they? They did, man. Sorry, I was too busy adding a New Jersey to my collection. Okay. You couldn't. We no, th- made it 90 seconds. Not even, actually. We made it 80 seconds before Brian had to flex his New Jersey, everybody. 80 I, I, seconds is the mark. Stop your timers. That was a wonderful segue, but I, you know, had to get that in there. Autographed yeah, Chris Aska jersey. Um, it has temporarily taken the place of the Nick Lidstrom jersey. Temporarily. Uh, the... Nick Lidstrom jersey will be back, but I had I wanted to show off New Jersey. I got to get a new hook because I couldn't take off. I have Datsuk Cider, Osgood, Lidstrom, and now Yuri Fisher, which is an autograph jersey as well. So I'm going to have to get a fifth hook to condense them together because there, there's no way I could pick between any one of those. Yeah, so. you couldn't just wait until like 29 minutes into the show when we were done. You just had to like. No, this is more important. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Fisher's jersey <laughs> collection is more important than our jobs, of course. Yeah. Uh, speaking of jersey, Scotty, there was like 23 of them out there for the Red Wings today. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was an attempt. That was an attempt for sure. I respect that a, a good attempt, honestly. Uh, um, good, for real though, good, uh, good solid win. Obviously, like preseason is, is, I say the same thing in spring training with baseball. Like, I really don't care about wins and losses. Like it, it's nice to look at and it's nice to see like, Oh, we got to win. But like, you, you the, the, like winning, you know, the Lions went four and the year they went on 16 in the preseason. Right. Like, that's, like preseason stuff doesn't like the, the wins don't matter, but the player performances like really yeah. do. I feel like we've gotten to a, a point where I mean, everybody just shoes in the preseason. It's all like, Oh, like who even cares? None of this matters at all. Like, there's a lot of like like individual player performances that I think, you know, obviously you still take it with a grain of salt. It's one game in the preseason. I'm not saying you're determining ever, anything out of it, but um, th- there's a lot of, you know, like for chemistry's sake, I mean, we saw what like what we think the power play might look like this season in this game. It, it looked pretty decent as well. Got a couple of goals off of the power play, which was nice to see. There was some good passing. There were some mistakes that were made for sure. Um, got off to a little bit of a slow start there. Um, saw a lot of new faces, which is important. Um, but then like preseason is like very much make or break time for all the fringe roster candidates, man. Like, you know, the last two years we, we've had some sort of prospect, you know, between Raymond and Soderblom the last two years, we've had some sort of like prospect debate happen in the preseason. So kind of waiting for that to take place, probably with Marco Casper as well. But um, yeah, good, good hockey game, man. I, I was uh, I was glad to see the boys back out on the ice and you know, for as little as it matters, it was nice to get a win too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's two exactly as you said, you can't you don't want to put too much stock into a preseason game, but there are definitely some things you can look at and look forward to in the regular season. And I mean, I think the first place we should start with is the power play looked fantastic in this yeah. game. Um, two power play goals pretty much is the reason why the Red Wings edged out the Pittsburgh Penguins. One was on a five on three, I think the other one was a five on four. Uh, that was off of I mean, it was like two for six. It's not like it was a yeah. huge uh, outcome for them. But, I mean, two power play goals is going to help win you a lot of hockey games, and it looked really good. One thing that Prashant Thayer brought up on Twitter off of the Moritz Sider goal was, like, the how valuable Shane Ghost Despair was on those power plays. And I, on, honestly, 
I was unsure how I felt about Shane Ghost Despair being on the half wall in the power play because he can tr- drive so much offense and really quarterback the power play from the top. I was nervous about him being on the half wall, but Prashant brought up like this is why you bring in a guy like Shane Ghost Despair who can act like a fourth forward out there on the power play while playing defense. He just his ability to draw players in out of the play and then make that pass back to more at Sider. And he, you know, he did that with the Larkin goal too. He drew a player in, passed it down low to Alex to bring it. Like it's that awareness of I'm, I'm holding onto the puck, not to score a goal, but to set up my teammate to score a goal. And he did it on both attempts. It was like, he's going to be an extremely valuable asset on that power play. And Prashant's like, this is a reason to be excited. And I completely agree. It was, it was awesome. It yeah. was it was like maybe the the biggest thing I took away from the game, honestly. Like I like if I had to list off like biggest uh, like reasons for optimism after game one of the preseason, I think uh, I, I think like Ghost might be at the top of my list, man. Like if you watch, I forget which power play it was. I forget which of the goals it was, but. I mean, it, it literally their, their their setup right was we're gonna have Cider hang back at the blue line. We're gonna have Debrinket in Larkin in the corners. We're gonna have Perron just being a bleep stir, it kind of like in front of the net. And then we're gonna have Ghost puck handle and just go wherever he wants, <laughs> like wherever yeah. the openings he thinks are. He can, to your point, like what you said, he can draw defenses into him. He still can make very effective patches passes. He's such a good quarterback. And like having him be able to be like kind of that, that quarterback type on your power play while still having such a great defender and a solid offensive threat as well insider at the blue line. Uh, like again, like I, I game one of the preseason, whatever. But if there, the, my biggest takeaway was how was that? It was how valuable I think Ghost is going to be on this power play this year. Yeah, and I mean, yes, it was game one of the preseason, and usually in away games, it's the, the first time we've seen it. It's the first yeah. time we've seen you know game action of those five guys on the power play at the same time against another team. So. And you weren't you. And to be fair, you weren't playing against Pittsburgh's best. Obviously, Crosby, Malkin, sure. Latang didn't play because it was well, an one old, of them was a five on three as well. Like, yeah. yeah. So like you take it all with a grain of salt, but like that's there. It, you can still be excited about how well they played, and like you look at that, and that's very likely going to be maybe with some small tweaks. Your power play one, and I, another thing, I, I was unsure about how I felt about. David Perron being your net front presence because he's so well known as a power play goal scorer. And he, you know, where to bring it is set up now between the circle and the half wall is where Perron was. And because he's such a good puck handler, he is such a good, um, you know, shooter and he's a very strong in the corners. I was like, I don't know if I want Perron net front because I want him to be able to unleash the puck. I'd rather have him on P power play too, rather in that same role than have him go to a different role. But you know, all those strengths that he had makes him a good net front presence too, which means if that puck gets behind the net, because he's so strong in the puck, so strong in the corners, he's going to go retrieve it, keep the, uh, keep possession alive, but because he's got good hands, he's going to be down low and he's a big body. So like, I I can see, I can see now what they were thinking. You know, this is why I'm not an NHL coach granted again, first power play or, or first preseason game against not their best. There's still a lot subject to change, but there was a lot to be happy with in preseason game one as far as the power play goes. Yeah, and and even if you want to just scratch the result, if you want to go like, oh, it was against, you know, it was against Pittsburgh's, you know, B team, one was a five on three, like, et cetera, et cetera. Even if you want to completely scratch, like, the outcomes and the goals that were scored, just eye test. Again, like, this is the first we've seen those five guys on the ice together with a man advantage. And, and you know, you at least got to see what the strategy and game plan and the formation is going to be, you know, with those guys on the ice in the power play situation. And and I, what I saw excited me like that. I, I that is what in, in the summer, like we talked so much about when we brought when we signed Ghost about how effective of a quarterback type of player he can be. And the fact that off rip, you know, first instance possible. We're seeing that come to fruition uh, this early on is, you know, it really excites me just because that was one of the biggest pluses for me as to why we brought him in in the first place. Yeah. And that top line in general. So the top line we saw today was Larkin, Debrinkit, 
and Raymond, and it looked pretty strong again against like the B team for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Try, not trying to take too much away, but at first blush, I really liked what I saw. You know, Lucas Raymond led the team in expected goals for percentage with like 70 percent uh, at five on five. That was in 12 and a half minutes of ice time. Uh, Corsi four percentage of 70 percent. Dylan Larkin was up there as well. Uh, third on the team and expected goals for percentage. So there was, you know, in your first taste of what that top line could look like, it was strong. Again, preseason game one, B team. You're not going to take, you're not going to, you're not going to take it too much and you're not going to run with it too much, but it is nice to see yeah, that. I'm, you, know, you know, I'm sure, right. And, and I'm sure, you know, in preseason game two or three, they'll look bad and, you know, we'll say, well, this is the bottom, like this is the floor, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's just how preseason goes. I, you know, I'm not declaring anything based on seeing them for the first time, but declare um, it. I, right. But I, I mean, definitely, you know, fun to see him out there. And, and the, again, like the style in which and the formation that they're going to run with excites me. Yeah, absolutely. We had to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to go over more of the things that impressed us in this game. And then, you know, not everything was all, you know, sugar and roses and rainbows. There was a little bit, yeah. uh, little, some things to improve on with this game as well. Uh, so stay tuned to locked on red wings. But first I got to talk to you guys today about DoorDash. Are you missing that syrup for your pancakes or did you just run out of your favorite coffee creamer? I do that all the time. I never all buy enough. My coffee's like 50% creamer half the time. So you got to make it taste good. Coffee otherwise is disgusting. Well, with DoorDash grocery delivery, made half of our fan base, but okay. <laughs> what? People get passionate about their coffee, man. Well, if they like their coffee black, then they're wrong. You got to put half creamer. That's why it's called half and half. Calling people wrong. <laughs> keep, uh, keep going. Talk about DoorDash being awesome. It's called half and half because you're supposed to put half cream or half coffee. I know that's it was a joke. I know that's not why. Anyways, DoorDash, guys. Uh, you've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save all of your grocery and restaurant favorites with $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a DoorDash membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want. Get 50% off your first, first DoorDash order up to $20 when you order code LOCKED at checkout. Limited time offer terms apply. That's 50% up to $20, no minimal, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fee on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKED. Don't forget... That's code locked for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty, you got to throw me a pity laugh or else it just gets awkwardly quiet like that, buddy. <laughs> I like I like when you say something that I either really disagree with or a joke that I think is really, really bad. I like having forcing you to like sit in it. Yeah, like no reaction at all. You just have to sulk in that. For a we should minutes. we should get a soundboard and have like crickets. That way, whenever <laughs> I say a really bad joke, you just play that instead. See, but I feel like that would be that would be bailing you out. You don't like when it's just silence and you have to sit in it. I feel like oh. crickets would be an out for that. That's been my entire life. I've never liked it when there's <laughs> just in silence. I always have to be talking. Hence why I host podcasts. Yeah, same. No, I have a similar issue. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Makes us, uh, I guess, kind of good at uh, good choices for this. Ba back to the task at hand, however. Yes. Uh, let's see. Nate Danielson scored a goal. The first, first goal. goal. Yeah. First goal uh, his, of the preseason for the Wings. Yes, sir. Yeah, and it was... Uh, you know, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for him forcing a turnover. It was kind of a broken play in the offensive zone. Uh, it was kind of just one of those plays where he forced the turnover and then it was kind of a scramble along the boards. Uh, Taro Hor ended up on Taro Horosi's stick. I'm not convinced he did that pass on purpose. I think it was a failed dangle yeah, that made its way to Danielson, but Danielson made the most of it and buried it. Um, and that really energized the crowd and energized uh, everyone on Twitter to see Nate Danielson score that goal. And I thought for it being his first ever taste of professional hockey, he looked pretty good. He looked comfortable. I think that uh, yeah, I'm not going to make any any definitive statements, but I was pleased with what I saw out of him in this hockey game. 
Yeah, same man. I, uh, I, yeah, I don't think he looked like overmatched or anything. Uh, a couple of uh, maybe some bad decisions here or there, but yeah, for the most part, I, tough to complain about. You know, being the first goal scorer of uh, <laughs> of of the fall for uh, for the Red Wings. I mean, that's kind of a a cool thing for him. So yeah, I I don't really have too much else to add. I, I was I was fine with how uh, he looked. I, I don't think he looked like out of place out there and. Um, as the preseason goes along, I think we'll have more and more discussions. Like he's not going to make the team out of camp or anything, but we'll have more and more discussions about, you know, kind of his path this season. Because I think it's been kind of hard to really definitively lay that out uh, yeah. without seeing him first. A, like this is just the first time we've really seen him consistently. But uh, B, without um, you know seeing after the preseason, they you know put him wherever they're going to put him and whatnot. So well, the other thing too is you know. I thought he was doing a very good job of producing offense. Uh, his Corsi four percentage and his shot totals represent that. He was on the ice for 15 shots, four or five against. Uh, shot attempts were 17, four, 13 against. Uh, the only issue was sometimes it felt like his line was taking shots that were maybe not the best quality, just throwing them at the net. And, you know, hey, there's something to be said for that as well. You know, you can't score if you don't shoot the puck. Uh, he was, you know, a negative. 6.2 when it comes to relative expected goals for percentage. So the quality of those shot attempts, like I was saying, was still something to be desired. But overall, very pleased with what I saw out of Dan Danielson in his first taste of NHL hockey, albeit preseason nonetheless. Um, other goal scorers, Michael Rasmussen, my boy, got on the board off a beautiful passing play from William, Wall William Wallander and Simon Edmondson. I thought that was a great tic-tac-toe pass. Got up to the point to Wallander across to Edvinson, finds Rasmussen in the middle. He rifles it home for the game winner in the third period. I mean, it was great to see those two prospects connect like that. You get a little taste of the future there. Don't know if either of those guys are going to make the uh, roster out of camp. Probably not. But love seeing Michael Rasmussen get on the board. That's gonna that's gonna get me going every time. You're right. It is. Um, I, I, I mean, speaking of, you know, if we talk about if we want to talk about one player individually in there, I, I thought Edvinson looked really solid. Uh, I, I was pretty impressed with how Edvinson looked all around. Uh, you know, we talked so much about how going into the preseason, the biggest thing that he needed to work on was just, you know, like confident decision making and, and more of like in the between the ears stuff because physically he's so gifted. Um, and, and I thought this game, he, he looked really good. I, I thought his decision making was a lot better. He had several really nice passes and obviously was uh, he was the primary on that one. Yeah, like that. I mean, there was uh, I, I thought he looked noticeably better than, you know, preseason last year, which is good. I, I mean, that <laughs> you'd hope, but, uh, you know, nice to see at least. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought the only time he made a mistake in my eyes, the, the, the glaring one, was when off of Jonathan Bergeron's big turnover. And I mean, I guess we can yeah. talk a little bit about the cons too. Um, you know, there were some of the young guys I think were a little little trigger happy in the game. Once the team got up, they got a little bit overconfident. Uh, Elmer Soderblom got knocked off the puck for a turnover a couple times, which is a little disappointing to see. A couple um, times, man. That was, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, like, you're that good. Was Geez, I, I I can count – it might take two hands to count how many times, like, Edvinson and, – and not even necessarily, on, like, yes, on the puck, but just, like, in general, man, like, it, it, it just seemed so easy for most of the Pens players to – just, like, get under him and just, like, mess with his center of gravity. Uh, yeah, and that's bit. – It's been a, the biggest talking point for him since – I mean, for years now, and it's going to continue to be – um, and you know, we, we, we've seen the upside, we've seen the intangibles that he has, obviously everybody's in love with the ceiling, but, um, that's a, that's a very legitimate thing that he's going to have to, uh, to improve on. Absolutely. That's going to be the one big thing that they're going to keep an eye on is whether or not he can really bear down on that puck, given his size, uh, he's got everything else going for him, but that's going to be a huge problem. Um, but again, not hitting the panic button by any means. No, no, game number one. Uh, and he looked great all through training camp and all through the red and white game. So, you know, not worried whatsoever. Uh, Jonathan Berggren had a brutal turnover in the defensive zone yeah. that resulted in a goal against that ended up tying it. And that was where the one glaring mistake on Edmondson's part came in. Uh, when Berggren turned it over, he kind of got sucked into that scramble. Uh, Pens came away with it on an easy goal to tuck away and ended up tying the game. So the young guns kind of, you know, another learning moment as overall is what I call it. Just a learning moment overall. They just got to 
learn not to make those mistakes. It kind of goes back to what Edvinson was saying during media availability is so easy in the SHL because, you know, it's a, it's not this fast paced. It's not this strong. You know what you're going to do. Um, so some of these guys, you know, they come over and it's funny, all three of those guys are Swedish players that came over from the SHL. Right. Um, just learning to take their, taking, take their learning that they don't have as much time and ha- when to get rid of the puck and when to move it and just ha- learning that hockey IQ. I'm really not worried about, it was a bad turnover by Berggren, but I'm really not concerned about Berggren whatsoever because I think he's going to be like, I think he has top six ceiling, middle six floor. I think he's going to be a absolute dynamite winger in this league. Yeah, no, and and this is a big year for Berger, right? I mean, it, you know, we we've seen we saw Raymond like from year one to two, not take that big step, and and I think a lot of people are are really banking on Berger taking that big step, and so, um, yeah, certainly not gonna make any proclamations over one bad turnover in preseason game one, but it was a bad turnover in preseason game one. That is <laughs> objectively what happened. So it's so um, yeah. over. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to play that game yet. We'll get there eventually. Um, but, but yeah, it, it was a, it was a rough turnover. Um, not a, I mean, just in general feels like he, he got off the gate a little bit slow, just, uh, you know, game wide, but uh, yeah, uh, fully expect him to still uh, be fine. Yeah. So we're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, Scotty, we should probably talk a little bit about um, let's say defense, goaltending, <laughs> And Alex Debrinket. We haven't really mentioned Alex Debrinket too much outside of a couple yeah. instances here. This is our first taste of him. So uh, stay tuned to segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Did you like that new little element there? I know, dude. I uh, I just got those in uh, in my Tigers folder as well. I was messing with them today. <laughs> I logged in. I was like, "Oh, what are these? Uh, I guess we're supposed to be using these now." So that's gonna yeah. be that's gonna yeah. be what we're doing from now on. Uh, for those, I mean, that, that's listening, cool. It's awesome. Makes us look very professional. I'm I'm all about it. Because that that's what you and I need is something to make us look professional. Because correct, God, yes. God, we need that. <laughs> I know I do. Yeah. yeah. For those of you listening and not watching, there was a nice little transition that played uh, when we went to. A quick cool. little break there. Shout um, out the locked on graphics team, man. Dude, it's, it's it's we're supposed to be getting some like quote graphics soon that yeah. we're gonna be able to use. I'm super pumped. Um, but anyway, Scotty, again, back to the task at hand. We keep getting sidetracked. Good vibes all day today. Uh let's start with Alex Debrinkit. Uh, I thought offensively he was stellar in this game. Lots of shots, lots. In fact, let me bring up the <laughs> the Red Wings heat map because this is this is really funny to me. Uh we back to heat map season. We, we're heat back, map baby. Season, baby. We must be back. We, we must, must be, be back. back. If heat maps are back on my screen, man, we must be back. All right. Uh, let me change the background for you guys, too. But you can see here is uh, the, so the Red Wings scored their two five on five goals uh, from the right side, the right circle. That was Michael Rasmussen and uh, Nate Danielson. But you see a huge red blob <laughs> along the left circle there. And that's Alex Dabrinka's wheelhouse. He had four shots in this game. But uh, Simon Evanson and Jake Woolman also had five shots each. So you can probably account for that. their combined, uh, let's say, how, how does that math work out? 14 shots in this game. Uh, big majority of them came from that spot. You can see that dark red is over three shot attempts. <laughs> So, uh, yes, Debrinket had a very impressive offensive game. I believe he had two assists in this game as well. He assisted on both the Moritz Sider goal and the Dylan Larkin goal. That Larkin goal was really pretty. We haven't really talked enough about that. Uh, down low, you had Debrinket on the left side of the goal, Perron out front, uh, Larkin back door. What I really loved about this, it was really subtle. And I don't know if Perron whiffed on it or if it was intentional, but it, I am, I'm going to... I'm going to err on the side of it being intentional on Perron's part, but when Debrinket sent that puck across, Perron motioned as if he was going to re- try and redirect it and tap it, but he went over the puck. And that little motion messed up Alex Nedeljkovic, who, by the way, had a goal saved above expected of 1.91. He was actually really good in this game. <laughs> he, uh, he started off real hot, too, yes. man. That first period, he looked locked in. Uh, locked on, maybe. Uh, and that so Perron went over the puck with his stick and that fooled Nadalkovich into thinking that he was trying to redirect it. 
And it bought Larkin enough time backdoor to send that top shelf. It was a beautiful goal. Uh, but yes, I was very happy with what I saw out of that top line and Alex or Alex to bring it in this first game. Yeah. Well, and you know, you, obviously you got him for the goal scoring. You got him for the ability to take shots. I'm glad that he did that, but um, I mean, he, you know, Larkin's goal was uh, the primary was to bring it. And it was a, yeah. Like, I mean, to your point, like beautiful, uh, beautiful pass, right. I mean, through everybody really, it seemed like, and uh, you talked about Perron's impact on that as well. Yeah. Just, um, yeah, uh, no, certainly no complaints there either. Um, I, I think the next thing really is just defense uh, in, in this game, unless you have anything more with the Brinkett. Um, I, I, I think, you know, defensively, man, the first goal they gave up was, I was like, oh my goodness. It was lazy is what it was. <laughs> it was the first goal they gave up. I mean, that was, that was brutal. I, I don't think anyone was moving. I, I don't, like the forwards included, I, I think all five guys turned into traffic cones for like 10 seconds. And it was just, I mean, it was, it was a remarkably poorly executed uh, defensive set by, by the wings for that first goal given up. Um, but the rest of the game, you know, it, it was, it's interesting and it's hard to take too much stock in everything that wasn't Cider Wallman, just because like, I mean, like Ghost was playing with with Wallander at one point, right? Like there there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of mixing and matching and, and and guys playing with guys that they won't be playing with in a week and a half. But um, I, you know, after that really eyesore of a start, uh, I I thought that the defense kind of uh, improved as the game went along. Yeah, I mean, it definitely got better as it went on, and they weren't really tested too much. They were tested a lot more at 5-on-5 five five in the second period. The Pittsburgh Penguins, I thought, really at 5-on-5 five five played well in the second period, and that's reflected in the shot attempts, the Corsi 4, the expected goals 4 percentage, all that. I think the Red Wings had a Corsi 4 percentage of like 20 in the second period, for yeah. those of you who care about shot attempts. Um, but you can see kind of here on the heat map, you know, one, you brought up that goal. Wallman and Sider were out there, but they were both just kind of coasting on the left side of the net. It was easy. The puck was behind the net. They just sent it right back out. It was a really nice play by the Pittsburgh Penguins. But you can see here on the heat map, you know, there are still a lot of shot attempts in that slot area. Two of their goals, caught, one came out from right out in front of the net um, at five on five. It, it was, again, I'm not trying to, well, the same way I'm not going to try and sing the praises too high in a preseason game number one. I'm not going to get too down about how the defense played preseason game number one. Uh, there's still a lot of like this in the all end. This game doesn't matter, but I'm um, hoping for a little bit more effort in the future. Uh, yeah, and like, you like know, that. I, I'd rather they they weren't going 100 miles an hour game one and stayed healthy. Then, you know what I mean? Like, I, that, not that that play was like an injury risk play, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's it's preseason game one. I'm, I'm not losing sleep over it. It just was objectively not a good play. And yeah. that's just like the truth. Um, but, but uh, even that, again, like, even as I said, I, I thought that as the game went along, they actually, uh, started trending upwards. I thought they played much better in the second, uh, the defense at least played better in the second and third period. Yeah. I mean, overall the Red Wings kind of dominated this game, statistically speaking. Yeah. Uh, I believe they outshot them. I, mean, I have the stats up here for you guys. So make sure I get this right. Uh, they outshot them 33 to 22. They dominated the face-off circle, won 41 face-offs to the Pittsburgh Penguins 24, so they won 63% of the face-offs. Um, two power play goals. Uh, one gave up one power play goal themselves. So just overall, they were they were all over the place. The Pittsburgh Penguins, one area, 21 block shots. That's impressive. But I guess when you're getting out shot by 11, you're bound to have more uh, block shots. So they had... The, but again, I bring it up. Seven giveaways to the Pittsburgh Penguins, zero. I mean, there's young... I'm not, again, I'm not like hitting the panic button or anything preseason game number one, but that's going to be, that's why you play preseason games, right? Like for those moments, like the best time to make those mistakes is in preseason games. And that's why I'm not worried. I think that's fine. The Red Wings won. They overall played a really, really good hockey game. Um, the last thing we got to talk about goaltending. I thought James Reimer looked fine. I thought Jan Bednar gave up a really bad goal that he's going to want back. That, that short side power play goal that he let yeah. in on, uh, Poulin, he's going to want that one back. But overall, I thought the goaltending was fine. Nadelkovich played great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we already talked, you know, I, I certainly don't put anything on the goaltending that happened really in the first period. That was just uh pretty, pretty porous defense. But um, yeah, I, I look, I, it's, it's, 
it, it will be nice if the goalies that the Wings brought in and signed in free agency have good preseasons. That'll obviously give people some optimism going into the season. But like Billy Huso is going to start on opening night uh, and, and might even start the first two or three games <laughs> of the season, it sounds like. So, um, yeah, at, at, at uh, obviously we want all the goalies to be good because that's been a huge problem for this team. Uh, that, that's one of the biggest question marks going into the season. I'm not trying to minimize that, but uh, on a game to game, but preseason game to game basis, you know, grain of salt for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scott, do you have any other final thoughts? Um, I'm trying to think, man. I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, good, good, solid outing by everybody. Really, mm-hmm. I, I don't think anybody looked like there wasn't any. People that, you know, you watch this game and, and you were like, oh, geez, like this guy just looked like he didn't belong out there. Like this group looks terrible. Like, you know, for a first preseason game, I, I think it's a, it's a solid way to get back into the swing of things. I was I was pretty pleased with everybody. So um, we're so well, back. We I think we're so back. Yeah, we ball, baby. We do ball. Um, Red Wings will be back on the ice in Washington on Thursday, that'll be a 7 p.m. Puck, puck drop. Uh, that game will be on NHL Network. I don't think it's on any local channels. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, but we will be back with a new episode tomorrow. I uh, got to figure out what we're going to talk about. Yeah, but we'll get there. You can bring you, bring you new content either way. Uh, so stay tuned know. to that. Uh, I already asked your final thoughts, but do you want to do it one more time just uh, so the no. people can hear? Once an episode. Because then it's going to take away from the awesomeness of it. Okay, then. Uh, anyways, we'll be back with a new episode tomorrow. I was like, should I should I just be snarky? And I was like, nah, I'm just going to let it slide. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. Uh, same time, same place. It's your team every, every day. day.